the SSL and TLS ecosystem is comprised of three distinct roles. Each of these roles are key players in the various aspects of SSL and TLS and the public key infrastructure. In this lesson, I want to provide formal definitions for each of these roles. We'll be using these terms throughout the rest of this course, so it's important for us to start on the same page. The first two of the key players that we are going to discuss are the client and the server. The client is the entity that's going to initiate the TLS handshake, whereas the server is the entity that's going to receive the TLS handshake. Now, when we say client, we don't actually mean the users. We actually mean the software that's going to be making the TLS request. From the client's perspective, this is typically the web browsers, things like Chrome or Safari or Internet Explorer or Firefox and so on. On the server side, the web server will be the actual web server software, so things like Apache, IIS, or Nginx. On the server side, it could also be a load balancer or an SSL accelerator. Both of these are devices which can terminate a SSL handshake. Now, I don't want to limit the definition for the client to just web browsers, because we are currently in the Internet of Things days, which means anything can connect to the Internet, and if we want those things to connect securely, we want them to be able to initiate TLS handshakes. So your phone, different apps on your phone, your smart toaster, your smart speaker, your smart refrigerator, your smart lights, your smart cameras, if it's going to connect to the internet securely, it is taking the form of the SSL client. So again, the client is anything initiating the TLS handshake. An important thing to understand about the client and the server is who is authenticated. The server is always authenticated whereas the client is only optionally, although very rarely, authenticated. So let's talk about that. Let's say this client right here decides to visit this website. Let's just say that website is bank.com. Well, when the client visits that website, that server is going to provide a certificate which validates the identity of bank.com. It says, hey, I am really bank.com, you can trust me. On the other side, the client very rarely provides a certificate to prove its own identity. That's what's meant by who is authenticated. In SSL, the server is always authenticated. We're always trying to make sure we know what server it is that we are talking to. The client very rarely provides a certificate to authenticate itself. So within SSL, the client is not authenticated. Now, when the client logs into a website, it's going to provide something like a username and password. So the client is going to authenticate itself to the bank some way or another, but it's not going to do so with an SSL certificate. So as far as SSL is concerned, the client is not authenticated. Now there is a way to do SSL where both the client and the server provide certificates to prove their identity to each other. That's called mutual SSL or mutual authentication SSL. And we'll talk about that later on in this course. For now, just understand the client generally is not authenticated at the SSL layer and the server is always authenticated. You could remember it as who provides the certificate the server is always going to provide a certificate. So that certificate is pretty important, but how do we get those certificates? That's the job of the certificate authority. The certificate authority is the governing entity that issues certificates to servers. It is trusted by both the client and the server and provides what's known as the trust anchor. The idea is the client might not trust all servers innately, but if the client trusts the CA, and the CA provided an identity, a certificate for the server, therefore the client can trust the server. That's what the trust anchor role is for the certificate authority. As of today, five organizations secure 98% of the internet. Here are those five organizations. And here are the percentages of certificates out there that have been signed by each of those organizations. Now just to give you some more context from these details, this chunk of certificates also includes the certificates signed by Let's Encrypt. DigiCert is actually a company that owns other CAs in the past, GeoTrust, Verisign, and Thought. And Sectigo, some of you may not have heard of them before, they are actually Komodo. They rebranded themselves as Sectigo. Either way, these five organizations secure 98% of the websites out there. If these types of stats are interesting to you, you can pick them apart in more detail at this website right here. Either way, this wraps up this lesson. The key takeaways of this lesson is understanding the key players of SSL, that is the client, the server, and the certificate authority. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I want to thank you for watching, 
and we'll see you in the next one. Did you enjoy this lesson? Do you want to understand the rest of the SSL and TLS ecosystem? If so, you'll want to check out my new course, Practical TLS. It's a comprehensive deep dive into the world of SSL and TLS designed to make you an SSL expert regardless of where you are now. This course is all you need to help you become the next SSL expert on your team or to help you nail those job interview questions. To learn more, check out practnet.net slash TLS or click the link in the description. Otherwise, thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.